Time for what? Time for what? Experience in college. Ball. College ran by real fast. You hung in with the best college. Touchdown! First time for everything. Well, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Let's do this thing. Genius, let's do this thing! Welcome to the show, everyone. Have you done it? You got it done, right? Now, this is the one step, one area that most people are like, oh my God, it's so hard, it's so hard. And it is. But I want you to kind of take a pause, take a breath, because we are going to talk about creating your college list. But remember, you've been creating yourself all this time with your classwork, your activities, family responsibilities, you exploring your curiosity, all those things you've done since after eighth grade is creating you, which is the most important thing in this entire process. Whether you're going to college or you're going to a very profitable vocational field, you creating you is important. So remember to acknowledge what you have done, where you started, so that you could be open to an amazing college list. So how do we find all this stuff? Now, I have been searching. What does everybody say? Whether it's a nonprofit, for-profit, consultant, school counselors, you name it. And a lot of times, a lot of people are asking a lot of questions, right? What are you interested? How do you want to spend some free time? What are you passionate about? How do I learn from the best? Sometimes it's kind of hard to start that way because you don't know what college is. You know, it's like if you put on an outfit for the first time that you've never done, whether it be a dress or a skirt, if you test drive a car for the first time, you don't know to pay attention to the brakes or shocks unless you've been in a car before and test drive it. So let's think about what you do know. You have been in school, right? Regardless of where you're at, you've all been to school. So what has not worked? For you. I think that's really important. Academically, emotionally, socially, those are things to be aware of. So think about what are the things that bring you down because everyone's going to have some pluses and minuses regardless where they go, regardless of the rank of that school. There are minuses out there. So think about what are the things you want to avoid um, based on your previous experiences from your school. And it's okay to think back from middle school, like what made you really happy and not happy? And did that change for you? Yeah, you're going to keep on changing, but no one has a crystal ball. But you do know that you have historical experiences. So write those things down, right? Don't be petty though, right? Like, oh, that teacher made me do homework. Come on now. (laughs) But think about things that really did matter to you that worked and did not work, whether it's Maybe your teacher didn't know your name. So does that mean you need a new, uh, a smaller classroom environment? Maybe the facilities was amazing, too small, too big. Maybe the weather made a big impact for you. Maybe it was too focused on sports and other activities. Maybe it was hard for you to get internships or have a sense of belonging. Maybe it wasn't diverse enough. You figure out what worked or what didn't work. And those are things to make sure you avoid in your research, okay? Once you do that, then yeah, figure out the other items that kind of really are important to you that is key in your process of looking at different colleges. Now, so remember the best list to start with, again, is you. So you wanna kind of establish your priorities after you realize what you does not help you in your life, what, is important what do you want from a college think about the learning environment right think about where of the 50 states you like to go to think about also like what type of studies they you want to make sure they are offered even though you may not know your major is it okay to be undecided like a school like cal poly san luis obispo there's no such thing as undecided so if you don't know maybe that's not the best place for you right if you really want to go to a campus where Computer science is great, go for it. But if your GPA is just above average, which is awesome, going to a school like University of Washington where it's a 2% admissions rate in Seattle, maybe you have to look at other options. So that's something that's important to kind of look at 
when you're looking at majors, often I see students looking at the facilities, looking at the location, looking at the sports programs first, not realizing how can they fit into that campus? How will you grow? And think about how you've grown. Do you, what is the biggest classroom size? They'll give you average sizes that you'll see in stats, but you want to always email those reps. What is your largest freshman class? Being a classroom of 600 versus 20 is a big difference right? One big public school like University of Southern California, it's considered a medium-sized campus not it, or, or large for some, but there are a freshman class that's 50. Yes, for a private school, some of those classes can be a little bit on the big size for you, or it may feel perfect for you. When you're looking at that list, one of the things that's also important to look at is their extracurricular activities. If you just put in Student Life, the name of the college, you'll get all the lists of activities that are there. If you go on Google Maps or TripAdvisor, you could find all the social activities that you do outside of campus. Yeah, here's an alert. You're not going to be on campus all the time. You know, you're always going to want to venture out a little bit. So if you go to a great school like Miami University in Oxford, it's a big, wonderful public college town. But if you go outside... Uh, there's not that much around there. And maybe that's something that's okay for you or maybe not. Those are some questions you need to ask. And when you look at the size, location, the majors they're offering, you also kind of want to look at what are the requirements of getting into the schools, right? Uh, look what the school profile has from the school. Is this like a likely school? Um, you know, is it me like the GPA? What's that range? that's available for you. Every school will have a school profile of students, like freshman profile. And also you wanna check the philosophy of that school. If you go facts about college why, it'll give you that list of information. Now the hard part about all this is, guess what? It is time. You are gonna need time to research your schools. So start with a list about maybe eight to 10 schools just to start researching, but you need to research from the colleges. Getting opinions from friends or family or alumni, that's helpful, but remember, they don't have your insight. They don't have your lenses to view the school. So it's really important to create a list that is balanced. Otherwise, it could feel overwhelming and really brutal. Um, if you go to score.com, they have great blogs and articles regarding about how that overwhelming feeling can really be a little bit too much. So once you have a school, think about what's the way you're going to actually research it. Are you a person that does videos? Do you want to just click on images? Is it just the majors? Again, it goes back to what we talked about, how you prioritize your list. Also, you cannot ignore the cost of your education. Right. So a lot of times I know some students I literally bumped into somebody who was a very successful plumber. And he talked about his brother who just went to a great school that was awesome and had great education that wasn't a great fit for him. And I said, oh, what school was this? He goes, University of Oregon. And I'm like, wait, your brother's in California. So he paid over sixty thousand dollars a year. Or that school goes, yeah, and he says he's in a lot of debt. That is an, a common story that I hear that a lot of students don't realize. If you apply to an out-of-state public university, you're going to get out-of-state tuition. That means bigger bucks than from your state. Why? You and your family are not paying those state taxes. However, though, if you go to Reed College in Oregon, it's a school that meets full need. It's a private school. So private schools, depending on their budget, can meet a lot of your finances. And if you just Google colleges that meet full need, you'll get about 70 colleges that are out there. And you can go to other tools like My Intuition, which we've talked about in past podcasts, to find out if the school meets your family needs or not. But you do want to look at those private schools. Hint, hint, majority of them are highly selective but that doesn't mean that you may not be in that range. You don't know unless you look at their admissions requirements. A lot of students forget to kind of look at that information to not only understand what majors, what steps they need to do, 
But also, if you click on visit college campuses, you can also check them out virtually. There are some websites like you visit where you could definitely check out some college visits. And sometimes the reps will come and visit your school, your campus, or will do general presentations in your area. Email that rep. There's usually a representative for your local area who does all the decisions or presentations about their college or university. This is a great time to reach out to them, to ask them when are they coming out. So you can ask those questions and don't hesitate to email them regarding about that. Now, how do you find out if a school is likely, level, or reach? Okay, so one of the things is, is just look at their profile, the schools. If you have, you know, some things like niche or also score, they do have what's called scatter graphs. Now, likely schools are schools that you could get in with your GPA. And sometimes you also have to think they have a lot of merit scholarships. So those are things you want to to look at. Just confirm if those merit scholars are still test optional for those test optional schools. An email to your representative will help you with that. There are some schools like University of Puget Sound, regardless of your family income, you get free tuition all four years. Yes, there are some scholarships like that. So don't let the price tag scare you. Use the tools communicate with the financial aid office about options that's available and check if their net price calculator is up to date as well from their website. We've talked about in past podcasts how that could help you as well too. Now, level schools are where your GPA uh, is in range of the school and that you also has like a range of some things that fit for you, right? So maybe they have certain clubs or a dance program that you love or acapella but there's certain things like their sports program you don't, but that's a compromise, right? It may not have everything. And maybe it's someone in your family's range for affordability. But if you get a side summer job, maybe you get a little bit of a student loan, no more than 5000 or a student loan, not parent loan. Interest rates are much better that way. Um, maybe that could be a possible school, right? Or that level school. And then the reach or challenge schools are those ones where you know, you fall lower than that 25 percentile. They, like, this is a type of school that gets 25 percentile or higher of students from all the schools that they get from their application, applicant pool. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but you want to take off the stress of applying to all these type of challenge schools. You want to be open and whatever happens, happens. Because remember, an opportunity becomes reach only if you think that way. If you look at all the different CEO leaders of the world, they have come to various, they come from various colleges and universities. Our current president right now went to, you know, local, Syracuse for law school, University of Delaware. Um, our vice president went to Howard University. It's not all about the top rank or hardest schools. It's about what's a school that's going to make you top rank in this process. Now, when you're now, you may be hearing, okay, I'm hearing about all these tips, you know, like how I get, you know, to narrow from all these like thousands of colleges and universities that are out there. But how do I do that? How do I kind of narrow down this list of schools? Well, there's something called the student aid index, right? It's the federal method where you want to check what that is for you. So from the FAFSA website, you want to know what that is. It used to be known as the EFC. So um, there are plenty of SAI calculators available online. So that's something, if you can't find it from the college website, um, definitely check out um, studentaid.ed.gov for more information. And then what you want to look at is also their four-year graduation rate and what I call the happy factor, the retention rate, right? How many of the kids are coming back sophomore year? That's so important. You don't want to be that story of that brother who just dropped out, right? Where it wasn't a good fit, right? That's why we talked about in the beginning, what works for you and what doesn't work for you. You need to look at all those aspects. Check about the diversity of the graduating class, diversity of ideas, experience, backgrounds. It is shown that when there is a school that's very diverse, it really promotes all students um, from all likes. Um, Think about the campus life, academic programs. Is it urban or rural or suburban? The class size, large or small? Do you want there to be just one or two tests or you like more paper projects? 
RateMyProfessor.com really helps you to have an idea what's the flow of some of the departments regarding the curriculum. How do they deliver that? Go on LinkedIn.com to see where the alumni is doing. College Scorecard is a great way to see what the average salary from alumni is that happen over there. So these are some of the tools that you could use to kind of narrow down your list. But now, how do I find those tools, right? So we mentioned a few times that SCORE is one one place where you could go, but there's a lot of other free options that's out there for students. Uh, we ACT.org offers some uh, that, talk, that helps you research for 4,000 schools out there. A Big Future offered by the College Board is another one at bigfuture.collegeboard.org. But hint, hint, they will kind of, you know, encourage you to, hey, why don't you take a test or SAT? Remember, um, there are a about over 800 colleges that are test optional. So do know that there's a lot of different options. But all is, so there's government websites that paid money like College Scorecard, College Navigator. Never seen it? Just Google it. It's on there. It's amazing information. A lot of students sometimes prefer College Scorecard because it's not so many filter with so many images. It's just here's the, the bloody facts. It's one click away. You can compare the schools as well. So those are some tools that you could use. College Navigator give you bigger detailed information about the faculty size. And if you haven't checked out College Scorecard, it also shows you not only the diversity of the student body, but also the faculty. That's also really important to check how well the school prioritizes diversity for the entire community. Key thing is start looking at the college list. Stop worrying about it. Start somewhere. When you start researching, start with the likely schools, not just the challenge schools. So important. Do virtual visits. Yes, they are over the summer, during the school year. Just remember, if they're not in your time zone, if you schedule it virtually, make sure it's that time zone over there. If you are a rising senior, check if they do interviews, but do the research first. That really helps also for you because you're also interviewing the campus as well. Have a balanced list. Have a balanced schedule. Make sure you looked at that affordability. Make sure there's a school that meets a variety of your missions needs, your social needs, your economic needs. You have to look at it comprehensively. And you don't have to decide where you're going. Yes, there is a thing called early decision. But it's only if like, oh my God, I love this school. I love this school. I love this school. I love this school. I want to marry you now. All the rest of this is kind of like a dating game right? You're researching them and then you're going to create a portfolio and the colleges have all this portfolio information. They are on Instagram. Now they're on threads. They're definitely on Twitter. They're on YouTube. There's data on College Navigator, College Scorecard. The college campuses have information website. There's so many tools. The key thing is to start and to believe in yourself and remember to acknowledge all the research that, that you have collected from your amazing list called your life. Until next time. Thank you for listening to our podcast. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your precious day to listen to us. So subscribe so that you could download this podcast wherever you may be. We're on so many different streaming devices, but also you can find out more information about College for All at college, the number four, all.com. We're also on Twitter at collegeforall.amv, Instagram, collegeforall.amv, and more to come. Thank you and have an amazing day.